I, I'm, you know, I, I'm a bit sentimental in this respect because it's the taste of my childhood. But it's not, in fact, it's not very, very fancy stuff. In fact, I need one because I'm, I'm a bit ill, as you probably hear. But hopefully, my voice will will, will last this this hour, and I will uh, have a chance to tell you about uh, fake news and fact checking from the perspective. Okay, um, I'm trying my Hungarian. Can you tell me how to do How to begin the program? Just like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So this is this is the topic of, of, of my presentation. As I, as I as I told you, I would like to <coughs> I would like to present it from the uh, from the point of view of uh, some findings from the project, which is also funded by Erasmus Plus. So it looks like they did a lot of good choices in the last couple of years, giving money to your project and giving money to to another project, which is which is called Media and Information Interesting and Innovative Teaching Methods Laboratory. The project is led by. Uh, Erika Strat Stratins University from Riga, Latvia, and the aim of the project is to take a look at, at uh, media and information uh, literacy, media education initiatives in Baltic states, Latvia, Lithuania, uh, Estonia, Sweden and, and Poland, and in the end we also want to open new master program, media and information literacy, uh, international uh, master program which would be uh, <coughs> uh, dedicated to to, uh, uh, to teach to teach uh, experts in media information literacy we are of course as for every international master program we are struggling a bit with all the regulations on the national level we have uh, we have to really adapt our program to all the all the, all the requirements but it's of course it's, it's another it's another story. And part of this uh, effort related to this media information literacy project is our sub -pro project fact checking initiatives and their educational dimension, case of Poland. So, this is the sub project, uh, and one of the tasks which I uh, uh, right now uh, <coughs> uh, hold, hold with uh, my colleague. Paulina Baczyszyn Maciasz from the uh, <coughs> from my from my department, and we are all, uh, both for, uh, part of this media information literacy literacy project. So by now we uh, made some <coughs> desk research and we started also some interviews with uh, representatives of Polish fact-checking initiatives to find out if there is any. Uh, uh, educational component in this fact checking activities. If fact checking organizations, apart from their core activity, which is of course, of course, doing fact checking, if they do something special in terms of in terms of media candidates, and if they do, the next question is how do they do it? Uh, we would like to know uh, what kind of actions, what what kind of what kind of ideas they bring in this in this respect, because we assume that uh, we as uh, <coughs> academia people can also learn it from, from people from the, <coughs> from the fact-checking initiatives. And of course there are different groups of fact-checking initiatives, and I will tell you a bit more in, in, in the moment, but in general, assumption, the main assumption is that we would like to learn from our uh, <coughs> colleagues from media industry and from 
non-governmental organizations, for example, watchdog organizations, which are also uh, in, interested and involved in fact-checking and other media and information literacy, literacy uh, activities. So, uh, just to just to show you our a part of our uh, conceptual and <coughs> methodological approach, I would like uh, to underline two aspects of media and information uh, media literacy and information literacy because they can be seen together as a media information literacy, as you can find it in, for example, in UNESCO documents, but of course these are also two separate, uh, separate fields. So what we are interested in, in the context of uh, our research on fact-checking, is the element of media literacy which is described as ability to evaluate how media performed. Yeah, it means evaluation of media content, also in terms of trustworthiness, in terms of accuracy, in terms of presenting facts as they are, uh, and not necessarily as it seems to be, as, as, frequently, as frequently happens. And in terms of information literacy, uh, the important element which is related to fact-checking is evaluation and ethical use of information. That's also part of this, the whole discussion about fake news, disinformation, and of course about fact-checking, about <coughs> all the forms of, of uh, <coughs> Uh, of, of, uh, of verifying the veracity of, of, of information. Because the veracity of information uh, is frequently also related, related to two di main dimensions. Skills, low quality of information can, can be caused by lack of skills, but also by, in terms of ethics. Low quality of information can be, in fact, a matter of ethical approach rather than lack of skills. Very skilled journalists can prepare false information yeah. for different for different reasons, and of course there will be there will be chance to discuss it even even uh, more more uh, in detail. And a very good example from our past. Some people underline that. There during communist times, in Hungary, in Poland, and in other countries of, of Central and Eastern Europe, there were very highly skilled journalists. But they were, they were telling complete lies. They were deforming reality under pressure, under political pressure. But from the purely professional point of view, they were really good, technically speaking, they were really good journalists. And somehow, sometimes we even say, okay, that we would like to have such well-skilled journalists in our times. They were really well educated, they were really well prepared, but under political pressure they are doing things which were completely uh, different from what we call traditional uh, journalistic, uh, uh, <coughs> journalistic quality. Yeah. It means also trust uh, worth of the information. The title of my presentation <coughs> suggests uh, we should start from the concept of fake news. And the concept of fake news is frequently used, usually seen uh, in the context of the of the concept of post-truth. Post-truth, uh, and he here we uh, quote the definition from uh, from uh, Oxford Dictionary, which by it, it, and it wasn't, <coughs> uh, it, it wasn't even surprising, two years ago, called uh, post-truth the word of the year. Yeah, it was the year of, of uh, uh, Brexit vo uh, <coughs> voting, it was the year of uh, US elections, uh, when uh, Donald Trump was, was elected the president, president of the United States, and the term post-truth uh, became really really frequently used in academic discourse, but also in journalistic discourse, even in, I would say, popular discourse. 
the word post truth became quite quite popular. If you uh, go back on your Facebook news feed two years ago, yeah, two years ago, you will probably see a lot of articles, a lot of materials from people posting about post truth, about fake news. Right now, it's probably a bit less. This is, this main wave of interest in, 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 this, in this topic. Of course, it's still existing, but it's not as high as it was two or two, two years ago. But that's something which, which, is, which is part of the, I would say, modern approach to, to journals. Modern approach to journals, which from the academic point of view means that so-called internal pluralism is frequently uh, and in, on many different occasions replaced by so-called external pluralism. So media don't care about being uh, balanced and being trustworthy. Uh, they represent different, very sometimes very radical points of view. And the effect of pluralism is achieved on the systemic level, not on the level of each organi media organization. So it means that a lot of a lot of media organizations is simply following some, uh, certain political, economic, or social social agenda, yeah? which is of course sometimes related to the fact of inventing information or uh, <coughs> uh, yeah somehow you know, uh, falsifying information or simply omitting certain facts and changing the context of given uh, given the reporting in this in this respect because sometimes uh, sometimes post truth doesn't mean that you tell lies it means that you have part of the truth the part of the truth is not necessarily the truth yeah that's something yeah i i can say okay yesterday i had two beers for example, but it was yesterday was still midnight, and after midnight I took another eight beers. Yeah, that's why I'm not looking very very well today. For example, yeah, but I didn't, but I didn't tell the lie. Yeah, I didn't lie. Yesterday I took just two. That's an example which is which reflects perfectly. For example, the reality of Polish public service media right now. In most of the cases, they tell the truth, but this is just sometimes it is just very small part of the truth, which is like this. Yeah, this is one percent of the, the truth. The one percent which helps them to show that certain tendencies exist. Then they don't tell that. This tendency is represented by 100%, uh, 1 of the cases, and 99% of the cases doesn't confirm it. Yeah, but it, in this certain certain situation, this this fact is 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 true. So post true <coughs> means that we don't look at facts; we more look at our beliefs, our own interpretations of the facts, parts of the reality which confirm that we are right and we are not <coughs> and we have and post truth means that emotions are much stronger and much more important than reality than the facts yeah, that our brain of course in practice the post truth post truth is more like conceptual. In practice, the term post truth means that we face so called fake news. This is the practical example of post truth at work. Fake news <coughs> mean, meaning the information which is deliberately means to be wholly and largely false or misleading. And this is this is the very simple uh, definition of, uh, of, of of fake news, and of course there are different reasons for creating fake news in the public sphere. Some people simply like to earn money. 
Yeah, that's that's what is uh, hidden by by the concept of clickbait. Yeah, people create it to make it popular, to make it trending topic, to earn money, yeah, to pay their bills, yeah, or to buy new car in the end. You remember the story, the story which was which was largely uh, uh, debated story of, of uh, Macedonian uh, teenagers from the city of Beres, yeah, which were able to earn eight hundred one thousand dollars preparing fake news on uh, Hillary, mostly Hillary Clinton, but also on on, on other details from from American presidential presidential uh, campaign. Of course, they were not interested in in, in uh, having Donald Trump as a president. They didn't care at all who who would become the president of the United States of America. They wanted to earn this 500, 800, 1,000 dollars, and they were really happy seeing that money is coming to their bank uh, bank accounts. Yeah. So financial financial gain is very important reason for for preparing, preparing for fake news. On the other hand, of course, we have also some other reasons for that. In the end, uh, someone can say, in the end, there are always money. Uh, if you want political gains, then you also think about money. But if we, if we think about this direct effect of uh, fake news, of course, financial gain is, is only a part of the story. In some cases, the political, social, gains are also really important. We can find examples of people fighting for the very good ideas, for the very, I would say, progressive ideas, but also using fake news. And you can say, okay, they are having really good reasons for that, but in the end they are doing things where, which are not ethical, which are not seen from the traditional point of view as, uh, uh, <coughs> as something, as something uh, something ethically uh, <coughs> accept, acceptable. So, by fake news, some actors of political, social, and economic life try to convince others to take an action, yeah? to buy something, to vote for someone, to protest against something, to not protest against, some, against something, even if I feel that maybe I should protest. That's that's a matter of creating, as uh, <coughs> classics uh, set images if in our views. Facts help us to build the image of reality in our, in our views. The image of reality, the way we see the reality, as it is built on information we get. Yeah? It's built on information and, and on the, the way we process information. Of course these are two different these are two different things. But facts, information we get is a very important part of this uh, part of this process. More false information we get and we believe it, more probable we will act according to this false knowledge. Yeah? More probably we will uh, act according to this <coughs> Uh, to this misleading things, thoughts we have. And of course, there is a third group of uh, people creating fake news, those preparing them just for fun. Yeah. In Poland, we found out that these are mostly students who make pranks. We don't know what, probably they still not think so, uh, so much about money. Having fun for some people is more important than having having fun. I try to, and when I think about it, I try to remind myself my own actions when I was like 20 years old, 18 years old. And I, yeah, I can believe that that having fun is sometimes much more important than having having money. And certain at certain at certain point, I don't know if you confirm this. Uh, especially, this is especially the question to students, because you are, you are closer to your 20, 20s than, than most of us uh, professors. And so, yeah, sometimes, sometimes it's also a matter of simply yeah, fooling other people.
yeah, and having fun seeing that people believe it. Yeah, I don't know if you. Uh, I'm not in this period in my life when I uh, like see people be, uh, being fooled and believing strange things. But yeah, at certain point, I can I can believe that some that, that some people uh, do it like this. Yeah. Of course. Sometimes it's all. It's not like we can separate these two reasons, one from another. At certain situations, these all three things, all these two things are uh, are combined. Yeah, people start start making pranks because they like to have fun. Then they sell their pranks in social media, and what? <coughs> One of the most popular Polish YouTubers who started from uh, pranks, Vardenga, right now is internationally known. Uh, probably you saw this uh, dog spider uh, prank, uh, which was internationally acclaimed, let's, go, let, let's call it this way, and he has like one million followers online. So he, he's even doing things which are illegal by design, because he knows that he has enough money to pay this you know, fees, uh, to pay these penalties. He goes to the courts uh, and he, he laughs at, 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 at judges because the, 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 the penalty is like, you know, 5,000 slots, which is nothing for him um, because he, he earns much more. Yeah, but he started from price doing, doing them for, for fun and then it became, it became business. Yeah, so it became very profitable, <coughs> uh, profit, profitable, profitable business. <coughs> but of course, there will be no fake news, there will be no fake news effect if people wouldn't believe it. Yeah, if people would simply say, ha ha ha, very fun. Yeah, it wouldn't be a problem. It wouldn't be a problem at all. But the, the main reason for which we are talking about fake news is because people believe it. It's because people really take them seriously. Yeah, if they wouldn't, there will be no problem with fake news. Okay, someone is doing fake information. There are even there are there are even, uh, media outlets doing fake information for fun, and we know these, these are these are fake. But we like to like to read them uh, as a as a form of ent entertainment. Yeah. But the problem, the big problem, is that people really really believe it. Yeah. If, but it's not a surprise for us if some people believe that that the earth is flat. <coughs> yeah. That's 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 the sign that that yeah people can believe anything. Yeah. If people believe that. Okay. If people say people didn't go to the moon, I can say okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. But if people say the earth is is flat, how? How come? Yeah, and there is a large group of people who believe it. The question is how many of them believe it because they really believe it. Yeah, maybe a significant part of them just simply wants to have fun and make others believe that they believe it. It's a very sophisticated uh, structure, but yeah, it can also work. Yeah, nobody, nobody said that people are, are simple. Yeah, sometimes we have very, very difficult, very complex motivations. So, another problem is that some research, yeah, and some researchers, for example from Massachusetts Institute of Technology, confirmed that false news spread faster than true information online. Somehow, false news are more popular than the truth. Yeah. Truth is boring. Yeah, false news are entertaining because some people create uh, uh, false news to make them really entertaining. Yeah, the fact that our president is a really good, uh, for example, husband, and he never have never cheated his wife is boring. If we can tell that our president had uh, one hundred. At first, 
uh, during 10 years, it's much more entertaining than if it's not true. Yeah. So we can uh, we can we can believe that that somehow lies are much more entertaining and much more attractive than uh, than the truth. And this research seems to confirm it. People prefer to share false news rather than true information online. Yeah, and it has been confirmed at least by this by this by this research. Yeah, of course we can do our own research on our on our uh, Facebook uh, accounts, for example, or Twitter accounts. But of course, yeah, this this was. Uh, <coughs> uh, quite a uh, large-scale experiment made by uh, people from uh, Massachusetts Institute, Institute of Technology. And <coughs> yeah, that's, that's something which also makes this uh, false news uh, the bigger, bigger uh, threat for our, for our democracies and for our, uh, for our society. Yeah. And in this context, we can easily see that fact-checking as a kind of activity and fact-checking organizations are gaining importance. If the false news are so relevant, if this uh, <coughs> tendency is so easily visible, we need a, a kind of counteraction. And fact-checking initiatives, fact-checking activities can be easily seen as a kind of uh, as a kind of a kind of uh, counter action. So why it, it is important, we know it. Yeah, at least uh, I would like to believe that, that, that you believe it after some introductory uh, slides. So right now we have to skip from this conce conceptual level to the practical uh, practical level in terms of discussing how influential these actions are related to disinformation, fake news, etc. and how deeply they influence the societies and on the other, on the other hand what's the role of critical thinking and evaluating information in the whole process? Are people prepared enough to face this challenge of fake news? Yeah. Are they prepared, but then lazy and uh, not willing to, to face this fake news? Or are they simply not prepared? These are two completely different realities. Yeah? And we really need, to, really need to know it. And some examples and some research from, from uh, <coughs> uh, coming fr from the sphere of media studies, sociology, psychology, confirms that it's not a matter of, of knowing, having skills, and then being lazy. It's rather a matter of, of lack of skills. Yeah. And lack of, maybe I should even underline it, more critical thinking. Yeah. It is a critical word in this respect, critical thinking. So, how can fact-checking initiatives help in this respect? There, these are, uh, these are, we distinguish three main dimensions in which fact-checking initiatives can help uh, <coughs> face uh, fake news threat. Yeah? They have to deal with the problem of distinguishing the truth from the hell falsehood, this is the first dimension, yeah. this is the, it seems to be the simplest thing, but in the end it not necessarily is the simplest one, so just showing what is true and what is false and why this one is true and why this one is false, yeah. because uh, yeah, this is the problem of many manufacturing initiatives that they say this is false and this is true. Everyone can do it. Yeah. Everyone can make that judgment. You need to show how. How you checked that this is true and this is false. So, this is one thing. Then, 
factory initiatives can reveal the mechanisms behind fake news industry. This is really important thing to show, to deconstruct the production of, uh, of, of, uh, of uh, fake news, to show people they do it this way. They take a picture and they do this or that with this picture to fool you, to make you think that something like this happened. Yeah? And of course, this is a very, very uh, big challenge because fake news producers are more and more sophisticated, prepared. They are more, more and more technically advanced. Yeah, probably all of us have heard about deep fakes, so-called deep fakes. Yeah, people are right now, with the help of technology, able even to manipulate videos, which sometimes, some time ago was really, really uh, difficult. There were some manipulated videos, but it was even without any special preparation, it was easily visible. Right now it's not so easy. It, and it will, won't be easier. It will be more and more difficult to differentiate real and false fake videos. So, revealing mechanisms behind it is really important. Of course, it's not, it not only depends on fake fact-checking fact initiatives. This is the big role for journalists as well. Uh, a few weeks ago, one of the Polish news outlets uh, presented the story about fake news factor. One of the journalists, she employed herself in such a firm working for, among others, Polish public service broadcaster. Well, so it was a big deal. It was a big deal. And she showed, and there are even uh, some articles in English describing this case. I think even the uh, English version of our uh, European Journalist Observatory posted it on Facebook. The story, uh, the story about, one of the stories about this uh, Polish, Polish uh, investiga journalistic investigation. So she exactly showed what kind of actions were taken. Yeah, what kind of, what, what kind of uh, <coughs> orders she got as an employee of this trolls farm or fake news uh, pr producer. Yeah, so it was really, really, really interesting because it was one of the very first cases in which, yeah, a journalist who uh, was able to infiltrate somehow uh, the the actors uh, producing fake fake news. And number three, fact-checking initiatives can <coughs> make <coughs> our critical thinking skills better. Yeah, this is the most important thing, to create informed citizenry, to make people aware of the, all the dangers related to, uh, related to yeah, consuming information, simply. Yeah? To make people aware of the fact that consuming Information is like consuming mushrooms. Some of them are delicious and really, really healthy. Some of them are really bad for your health. Some of them are even deadly. Yeah. So that in, we are very big mushroom lovers in Poland. That we are like uh, uh, a few dozens of people die because of yeah this uh, this fake mushroom. Okay, these are real, but, but really, really bad mushrooms. But some of them looked exactly, almost exactly like these really good mushrooms. And the same happens to information. Sometimes they look exactly, or almost exactly, and this almost makes a difference. Almost exactly like real information. So, the other questions were, what is the potential of Polish fact-checking initiatives in the field of media and information literacy? Question number two. Do they deliberately include educational component in their activities? Yeah. Do they think about educational component? What are the effects of their educational activities? And question number four. Do they cooperate with the other actors in this dimension? So of course, I don't want to tell you about all these findings 
of our 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 research, but just just want to make you aware what kind of what kind of information we we are searching searching uh, searching for. And the question number five, which I added especially for this presentation, are educational materials prepared by fact-checking organizations suitable for uh, journalism students? It means are these materials prepared by fact-checking organizations good enough? for us to use to use it in the classroom. Yeah? Is it is it advanced enough to present it to our to our students or not? Yeah? So just to just to prove that we we made such uh, uh, such yeah, conceptual preparation for our research and I don't want to go more into into details. Yeah, that's what we're asking. And what we found out is that we can divide fact-checking initiatives, <coughs> educational activities, into two groups. Indirect and direct educational initiatives. In these interviews with people representing fact-checking initiatives, we found out that many of them see fact-checking as educational activity it's itself as, a, as an educational activity. Doing fact-checking, we do also media education. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the statement which we're frequently hearing. We don't do any special efforts in terms of education, but we think that our existence as such, as a fact-checking initiatives, means that we are doing something good in terms of educating people in this respect. Yeah. So this is this is indirect educational effect of fact checking initiatives. How, that's how we how we call it. Then we also found some examples of fact checking initiatives, Polish fact checking initiatives, I want to underline it, doing some direct educational activities. It means preparing some planned actions related to uh, and and taking into account some certain target groups for the educational educational efforts. They are preparing courses, workshops, and different different, different uh, <coughs> kinds of educational educational uh, activities. Yeah, apart from their core activities, which is always fact checking. Yeah, that's that's also something they underline. Our core activity is fact checking. Even the one which is really strongly involved in, in these educational actions. They, in the end, the guy told me, but our core activity is still fact-checking. Yeah? This educational stuff is very important for us, but it's just an addition to our main mission, which is fact-checking information for public sphere. So, here you can see, you can see the list of Polish, Polish fact-checking initiatives. And there are, for now, we found seven which we can see as more or less le relevant in this respect. Some of them more, some of them less. This Antifake is really, really special case because it was created by the firm which was accused of being a uh, fake news industry. So they declared, we are very sorry for that, we don't go to do it anymore. And we, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a kind of you know, uh, follow-up activity, we will create a fact-checking website. But no one treats them seriously. They do some. In fact, they do some fact-checking. But you know, it's a kind of original sin. Yeah. If you think, okay. It's it's like you know, uh, you would like to. Would, would you like to buy a car from the guy who was spent 10 years in jail for stealing cars? Well, even if we believe in resocialization, there will be always a kind of second thought. Yeah? If I should go there or somewhere, somewhere else. So maybe they will prove that they are 100% good and 100% dedicated fact-checking initiatives, but it's quite fresh, so we, it's difficult to, really, right now, difficult, very difficult to assess. 
So we, decide, we divided to, uh, these factory initiatives into two groups. Those created by the media organizations and an important information in the suspect is that most of them were created on the basis of the grants from uh, Google Digital News Initiative. So these big media organizations were applying for grants, they, were, they get some money and they started some factory initiatives. So the question is, Will they go on if the money will be over? Not, I'm not so sure. Okay, but right now money is still there, so they are they are running their their websites. Then then we will see. Maybe some of them will uh, will continue their efforts. Maybe some of them don't. So we have, and in fact, these are this is the biggest biggest part of of Polish uh, factory initiatives. But in the, there are also independent initiatives created by civil society actors, like DEMA, which was the first one and which is by now, in our opinion, the most important one. Also in terms of educational activities. Those under left, those in the red, these are two examples of factory initiatives involved in direct educational activities. So right now, <coughs> and other ones are, yeah, this one is also special because it's uh, related to Facebook. As you, as you know, Facebook uh, signed an agreement with Agence France Press, uh, and uh, Agence France Press is doing fact-checking for, for Facebook. So they have also Polish, uh, Polish version. So, skipping to this, uh, direct educational efforts, as we assumed in the very beginning, it has mostly practical character. It has mostly practical dimension. Practitioners help how to fact check information. Yeah, they they don't do like academic stuff in terms of conceptualizing, making phil philosophical uh, background for fact-checking. No, they simply teach people how to, uh, how to make distinction, how to find if news is false or not. And it, I think it's not, not, not surprising for anyone who's, who's into, into this kind of, at least for any, uh, those who are uh, in, this, in, the, in this research. So this is, this is the first example, Academy of Fact Checking, Academia Fact Checking, from this DEMAG, the first Polish fact checking initiative, which started five years ago. Interesting fact, the boss of this NGO is doctoral student and our faculty. Uh, I haven't met him by now, but, uh, but we don't to each other, he, oh, he, he's now a bit hidden because he's, so they told me he's, he's finishing his PhD, so probably he will be disappearing, uh, disappearing for another two, three years, because this, yeah, he, finishing PhD is not so easy process, yeah. Uh, but yeah, he's officially the boss, officially the boss of this, of the, of this demagogue, and yeah, I would like you to, to show you website. Of course, it doesn't really make sense to go deep into details. This is the one I told you about the Pimowski, a doctor of student. But these are mostly mostly young young people involved involved here in this. 20, 25 years old people who started who started this uh, this academy. So we can find poradnik means devices, some advices concerning verification of information, sources of information, etc. Źródła, okay, this doesn't work. Sources, so probably it's under construction. Reports, they are preparing reports on fake news uh, in, in Poland. For example, here is the report on legal aspects of fake news. Uh, even two reports 
on it, critical thinking, main approaches to critical thinking. And of course, as every NGO, they ask people to support them. If you would like to support them, feel free. So the, their main activity is organizing courses and workshops for three target groups. Primary school of kids, secondary school students, and higher education students. Yep. It, means, uh, it means all three main groups of, of young people involved in educational system. So on every three levels they do it. However, they told me they, they are also preparing some dedicated courses for, for example, elderly people. Or recently they were even asked for some firms to organize courses for the employees. These are commercial ones. Because other ones are uh, they they do it, they do it on the uh, on the basis of grants on the basis of some uh, donations. So these are not paid. If any firm wants to employ them, of course, uh, they, they, they receive some, some, some gratification. So they are doing courses. They are doing courses which are like three, four hours long. So they meet one day meetings or half day meetings uh, rather. And what they told me is that they think that this formula is okay to start your involvement in fact checking, but to make uh, you create a deeper understanding of fact checking, they think about longer courses and having the chance to meet people for, s for more than three or four hours. Yeah. To, for example, create, create a group of people who would be really. Uh, involved in a stable way in fact-checking movement. Because, and this, these short meetings are okay to make people aware of the basic things, but then, uh, then it's, uh, it, it, they, they will also uh, like to achieve this long-term long -term effect. So this is, this is Demagog. And another one is Demaskator. Demaskator created by Polish uh, print media publisher, the biggest publisher of regional newspapers, a German publisher, uh, Polska Press Group, belonging to Passauer Neue Press, German, uh, German publishing, uh, publishing house. Okay, yeah, it's conste cons contextual uh, advertising is working. Yeah, it's, it's, ah, yeah, it's not my computer, it's always. Even on my computer there are Advertise ads from Hungary and probably it will be for another few weeks. So they are preparing mostly educational educational materials in the form of short articles describing certain phenomena related to uh, uh, fake news, fact checking, etc. But I think the most important thing is the series of six videos. They posted on Vimeo. The title is Academia Demascator. The Academy of Demascator. Demascator means someone revealing the truth. Someone revealing the hidden truth. And this is the translation, translation into, 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 into Polish. And this is the uh, <coughs> The first part of it, there are six parts, as I, as I mentioned. The first is dedicated to verification of veracity of, uh, uh, of photos online. And this is quite well-known person, David Jonsa, one of the uh, fathers of Polish data journalism, I can call it this way. Uh, I would say very knowledgeable man. I don't know if we can hear. Uh, his voice. I don't want to because it's in uh, it's in Polish, so it doesn't really make sense to spend seven minutes on it. 
Dziękuję. Pod koniec 2013 roku po sieci zdjęcie Jarosława Kaczyńskiego. So yeah, this, he started just to just to make make you aware of how they did it. W tym odcinku akademii wiście zostały zrobione. He started from from describing Google graphics, to fake news. Jest application, że każdy z was co najmniej raz da się search for photos online and you can you can compare the photos. Najprostszym i najbardziej użytecznym narzędziem do sprawdzenia wiarygodności zdjęcia jest tak zwane odwrócone wyszukiwanie kluczowe, również popularne. And he he's showing all the other options related to to related to this searching for for images, not only in Google but also on Yandex, Baidu. And he shows step by step how to do it. And then he shows an example of the photo from Maidan protests. Here it, it's quite difficult to see it. It's the head of Jarosław Kaczyński, the leader of Polish ruling party. So someone posted the photo like this with Klitschko, this, this Ukra Ukrainian boxer, Vitali Klitschko. Vitali or Vitali, 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 Vitali Klitschko. And political advisor of Jarosław Kaczyński. And you can easily see that something is strange on this photo. We know all that Klitschko brothers are very tall and big men, but even compared to Klitschko, Jarosław Kaczyński seems to be, and especially compared to his political advisor, <coughs> Biela, Adam Biela, he's, okay, he's not very tall man, but he's not so, 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 so small. Yeah. Yeah. No. So, so this was the kind of photo which was distributed online to make, you know, uh, laugh at, at Jarosław Kaczyński. But the real photo, yeah, this is, this is the different versions of this photo. And then he shows how this Google graphics uh, works once again on this study and shows that real photos from that. Yeah, he and I shows how to identify the real photos from uh, from the from the from the event. And you can easily see that okay, Jarosław Kaczyński is much smaller than Klitschko, of course, but not as small as he was on this first photo, which was which was manipulated. Yeah. Another example is, uh, and it will be easy to fact check it. Is keep on mission. So we see that much more that many services internet have original images of protesters. Yeah, and he, sh he shows how to how to uh, how to check it once 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 again if this photo was false. Here is here is another example. This is the bridge of 25th of uh, 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 April in, uh, in Lisbon, which was, in, in some media reports, uh, signed as uh, golden, bridge, golden Bridge in, uh, in San, Francisco, San Francisco. And it's another example. And he shows once again how he checked if this is Golden Bridge in San Francisco or something. Uh, and in the end he found it's not because it's, 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 it's the bridge which, which is very fa famous bridge from, from Lisbon. Yeah? So everyone who, who went to Lisbon knows it. Yeah? Because, yeah. You can go to Lisbon and can see, can see this, br this bridge. Yeah? So he shows step by step. How he found. And another example from Poland. And in the meantime, 
In the meantime, he also shows examples of another applications which help us to identify uh, if the photo is true or, or fake. Example from Polish, uh, from Polish media. But, for example, also the application which is called Tina. Yeah. And there is also a plugin called Reverse Image Search, which also helps to, to check if, the, if it's true or false. Nie tak dawno temu ktoś wrzucił na Twittera zdjęcie rzekomo przez ten example one, one more example from Poland in which he shows that not always you can do it with the use of technology. He showed this photo from Poland on the on the on the monument which is symbolizing 96 person uh, who died in this small plane crash and someone, yeah, someone, someone probably went there, but then he found that probably photo is manipulated. Why? Because there is only, only one photo from this, from this event, and very low quality photo, and he observed that there is a lot of people doing photos, and he ne never found any of these photos in social media. So there is a group, group of people Making photos, but no such photos appeared in the in the social media. So the and he in this part of of, the, of this uh, of this video he shows that it's in this case it's impossible to check it on the technological basis only. So what he showed is that sometimes you also need and sometimes you only need critical thinking approach which can help you to somehow realize if it's really true or false. You can't say 100% that this photo is false, but there are quite strong, quite strong, uh, <coughs> there is quite strong evidence that someone probably manipulated this photo. Yeah? Because otherwise uh, it would be easier to find another photos, angles, etc., etc. Yeah. So probably this photo, so not one for 100% as in the case of Kaczynski's photo, but most probably this photo, this photo is fake. Yeah. And of course it's one, of, one out of six episodes. There are, there are six more, just to make you aware of the topics. So the first one, verification of photos, verification of videos, verification of websites, verification of photos once again, to check where and when exactly the photo was taken. So not, not if photo was taken, but where and when the photo was taken, if we know the photo is true, but we don't know, there's a, for example, I have photos of some riots in Paris neighborhoods used for Polish, I don't know, racists to, to, to show that the yeah, uh, situation in France is really, really bad. And then it was revealed that this is, this is the photo from a completely different, completely different place. It shows riots, but not in Paris, and not caused by this and that group of people. And number five, verification of social media users. And number six, advanced web searching. Advanced method of searching for information online. Okay, so the, with these two examples, I finished my presentation, which was probably Anna Marie wanted to tell me that I, uh, I, I told more than, than expected. Seven minutes more, forgive me. And yeah, I hope I hope that this, this presentation have, at least partially helped you uh, helps you to understand the phenomenon of fact checking and potential educational use of fact checking uh, fact checking uh, involvement.